Fantastic. Um, again, Maggie Rogers, everybody. I just met Maggie today. I've known about Maggie for a while. Um, my wife used to be the music director here at KFOG years ago. And uh, we were in Austin last year before I came out here. And she told me about Maggie. She, I was actually already out here. She was programming a station in Austin. And she told me about Maggie. And I was like, wow. Um, so I've known about you for a while. Um, but then today, I didn't even realize that was you I was walking on the elevator with. You're, you're kind of unassuming. You've got, your, you've got your LA, I'm at Whole Foods, don't bother me look today. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm so, uh, that's terrible. I'm sorry. No, not terrible at all. <laughs> Um, you, telling LA jokes in San Francisco is the thing. Okay, to do cool. Like I'm I'm new to the West Coast. A little bit. Um, you are. You're a East Coast girl. You're from I, Maryland. I'm an East Coast gal. And um, West Coast is great too. I'm just I'm new. <laughs> Hi. Let's see. South by Southwest, six shows in what? Three days. Two days. Yeah, six shows in two days. You did James Corden last night. I did, yes. Um, all of a sudden, you're here. I mean, I, there's got to be moments where you're saying to yourself, what city am I in? I think all of a sudden, you're here. That's, that's the perfect, that's how I feel. I, I feel, I, I, sort of, I sort of came to last night on James Corden. I feel like I had been asleep for a year, and I woke up on a soundstage in L.A. singing my song on a TV show. I was just very like, when did this happen? <laughs> so we were talking a little bit uh, about that. Uh, earlier, the process, I, I said, what was that like last night? T tell everybody else what you told me, because the, the story just about even the wardrobe was... Oh, it was really silly. Well, we, we basically, I, I wear this most of the time, which is a little bit different than what is exciting to wear on stage. For listeners, I'm wearing jeans and a, a green jacket. It's pretty standard t-shirt attire. Um, and we requested a bunch of outfits, and then all of the designers kind of went rogue, and I ended up with like denim underwear and a leather bustier. <laughs> and I was just like, I don't know if this is for me. <laughs> so um, we went on a little shopping trip yesterday, but I think it turned out really well. You look beautiful. Well, thank you, I appreciate it. Um, I have to say, uh, you know, I've, I've looked into your past a little bit here, and uh, banjo was one of the first mm -hmm. instruments that you, you got started on. Um, and uh, from what I understand, you played music for a while, and then you took a little time off, and we're going to school, and and you took a trip overseas, right? Or you were were you in school in France? Or, yes. And something happened to you there where um, you kind of discovered another kind of music mm -hmm. that you ended up melding together with what you'd already known. Is that would that be a fair way to describe it? I th I think so to a certain extent. Um, I didn't grow up in a musical household, so I had never really heard house music before um, or, and dance music. And so when I was in Europe, I guess I had always thought that going to a club meant like high heels and expensive drinks, which I think sort of ha have a really fun, exciting place in the world of like getting dressed up. But I always just wasn't really sure that that was what I wanted to do on a Saturday. Um, but my, when my friend of, a friend of mine, I was in Berlin and she was like, let's go to the club. And I was like, ah, I don't know, dude. And she was like, you have to wear sneakers or else they won't let you in because they'll know that you're not there to dance. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. And I remember just seeing, I mean, what I love about music so much is that it creates community. And being in this club and seeing all these different people, different genders, races, ages, react so instinctually to the tension and release of dance music, it sort of just hit me that it's something that is incredibly human and that rhythm is something we all feel really strongly. Um, and I had sort of been missing that in my music. But also, I mean, I, I was making pretty quiet folk music, pretty introspective music, and I wanted to play a show that I would want to go to on a Saturday night, that I'd want to go to with my friends and have a good time and show I would be excited to play. And so. Do you find, and, and you're still a very young lady here, but you know, a lot has happened to you in a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. When you found that music, do you, did you feel like, well, this is something that's kind of always been here. It just finally was brought out? Or? Yeah, I think totally. I mean, I, I grew up playing the harp and listening to classical music. But at the same time, you know, the first, the first record I bought was a double purchase of Baby One More Time <laughs> and the orchestral score from the first Harry Potter movie. 
<laughs> so I think that actually represents two really wonderful sides uh, to me that I'm sort of always sort of struggling with, which is the part of me that loves pop music. I think Carly Rae Jepsen's Emotion is one of the best records that has been released in the last 10 years, and I have no problem saying that. Um, and I also love folk music, and I love, I love classical music, and I love, I like a lot of different types of music. I think, you know, the music that I'm making now so often gets categorized as folk dance, or, you know, whatever you want to call it, but I think, I think if you heard it in a coffee shop, you wouldn't say it was folk music. I think that that's just sort of my background. And, I, you know, as I continue to make music, I think that that will change. I'm just sort of consistently looking for ways to challenge myself. I think a lot of people have seen the video of you with Pharrell. Um, and uh, I watched it again today, and I just watched you, and I thought to myself, how incredibly scary and brave it must be to sit down in front of somebody like that and have them listen to your music. And you're, I mean, talk about just completely exposing yourself. Yeah. I mean, was that terrifying for you? Not necessarily to just be sitting with him, but just to be sitting in a room full of people and exposing that, because was nobody had heard that song before. No. I mean, I, I studied production and engineering in, in school, so I was in the advanced production class, and that was sort of my homework and what that was that day. And, and so I'm, I'm very used to having to sit in front of my classmates, my peers, and share my work for critique, because that's just art school. Um, but I didn't, I didn't know if Pharrell was going to be there that day or that there would be a camera crew or that that video would inevitably go online. So, I mean, I'm really grateful for the way that things have sort of unfolded, but it's, it's a very strange thing to have a, a, the, such an intimate moment shared with the entire world without any control over it. Um, inevitably, though, I mean, the only thing I've ever really wanted to do is make music, and I just am happy that I get to wake up and think about music every day because that is just such such an honor. That's what I saw from you. As I watched you go through the, the different, you know, just sitting there and kind of talking about it first, and then the song started, and you looked a little bit like, okay, how's this going to go? And then I saw you just melt right into your song, almost as if nobody else was in the room. Mm. And I really enjoyed watching that moment. And then to have him say the things that he said must have been, you know, wonderful. But uh, the song is amazing, and I really, really, really would love it if you'd play it for I, us. That is the game plan, so I, okay. I would love to play it for you. Awesome. We didn't have this planned out or anything. Um, once again, please, Maggie Rogers.